I was in the Clinton administration uh, during the period when it was decided that there should not be regulation of derivatives. I was not particularly a part of that decision, uh, which fell to the Treasury and, and the Federal Reserve obviously had quite an influence on, on that too. Um, I think that was a mistake. I think the decision not to regulate uh, derivatives, to leave them sort of running free was a, was a mistake. Uh, Bill Clinton himself has said that, and I think uh, others who were part of that decision and maybe have uh, looked back over their shoulders and said maybe that wasn't such a, a great idea. As the crisis hit, we didn't know enough about the, the derivatives that were out there, who was holding them, what the implications would be. <clears throat> The, uh, whether, you, you, whether you think it was right to let Lehman go down or not, I think the Fed uh, now, with the benefit of hindsight, realizes they didn't know what was going to happen, what would be the consequences of uh, Lehman going down. So there was a, a, a real lack of uh, information, and I think um, it was necessary to take a look at derivatives regulation. <clears throat> My concern now, though, is that the pendulum may have swung too far the other way. And I think derivatives have maybe been given um, overstated a bit in uh, in their influence on the on the crisis. Uh, like many historical financial crises, including the SNL crisis in the 1980s, the most recent crisis, the one we've been going through, I think was fundamentally caused because financial institutions bought and held bad assets, and that's sort of the common way. That's sort of what happens. Um, Something looks good, it looks like it's giving you a good return in relation to risk, and then you uh, find out uh, that you were underestimating the risk that was involved in it. So the collapse uh, in the United States, the, this, this was not restricted to the United States. There were banks in Europe that uh, bought bad assets, uh, some of them uh, real estate related, some of them uh, not. But here in the U.S., it was overwhelmingly associated with uh, real estate uh, assets. And uh, so when they when the price of uh, real estate dropped so sharply and unexpectedly to most of the people who had done evaluations, uh, they and the synthetic assets that had built, been built on top of those mortgages uh, really brought, uh, helped bring down the system or close to bring down the whole system. So derivatives were part of that story. There's no question the, the CDS that uh, had been issued by, by AIG uh, sorry for all these, but I assume these are fairly familiar uh, uh, acronyms here, but uh, those C credit default swaps uh, certainly were part of the story. They were issued by AIG because they thought they were going to make a ton of money. They were bought by institutions that were afraid their financial assets, their mortgage-backed assets, were going to go down. Um, they certainly were part of the story and part of the reason, uh, obviously, that AIG ended up getting uh, bailed out. But I don't think derivatives really were the main story, uh, and I think it, it, that uh, all derivatives should not necessarily be viewed as, as this toxic, as Buffett said. I don't think they are necessarily uh, the atom bomb or the toxic uh, part of the, the system if we understand them better and use them better. If we look at some of the specific uh, rules that have been proposed, notably the Volcker Rule, uh, the Single Counterparty Credit Limit Rules, the Lincoln Amendment, the Collins Amendment, I think it's hard to know how each of them is going to work individually. So if you just look at them in isolation, uh, there's been quite a bit of literature, uh, quite a bit of uh, disagreement about how, let's say, the Volcker Rule would actually work out in, in uh, practice. I certainly don't know, and I don't think actually anyone knows, how if we put them all in place and <clears throat> implement all of them, how they're going to work together and what the combined effect of this set of regulations <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be. And I think that creates a dangerous uh, situation for uh, our financial uh, sector and for the ability of that to provide financial services to the rest of the economy.